Hello and welcome, dear fountain pen, ink and paper loving friends out there. My name is Doug and I'm coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico and specifically from my studio. And today we want to visit or I want to visit with you my desk and show you what I have currently inked as well as three new pens yes i said it and um we want to look at those pens we want to look at what's inked and of course as usual confess to shameless over inking as you know it from me i am primarily a letter writer i do journal that's what i use my pens for and i keep the pens that i have inked in cigar boxes and i am covering them up and but here you can see them behind me i have currently still uh my two regular boxes which are a mix of all kinds of colors and all kinds of pens, vintage as well as new. The other box has all the pens that are still inked with brown inks. And the third box has my collection of Twisby Ecos and Ecos Tea. And oh my gosh, have you seen that new Twisby Eco Tea? saffron that is coming out i love yellows love oranges so this will be coming here and as usual from kirk of pen realm i've talked about him before i don't get any freebies i buy my pens from him like everybody else but he does a free nib tuning and i just love that that's why he's my choice for my twinsbees and yes let's get started and take a look at the pens welcome to welcome to the selection of pens that are inked with brown inks all the different shades of browns and if you have been here for this last video you may remember that there were more pens yes some of these i have already written dry but i'm still working on everything that's still in the box and so let's get started starting with the beautiful waterman karen deluxe and a cat, an attention-seeking cat. Move over, move over. I know many of you love cats, so I'm not going to chase him away, but I'm telling you, he's annoying. And I know this is a Birmingham Pen Company. I have so many browns, so I apologize for looking up what they are, because I will not be able to remember all these shades of brown what they are so this is a pen and a combination that i really love move over it's a gorgeous nib it's a real wet rider and it's a piston filler no, a cartridge converter. I apologize. Yeah, if I would have to say something negative about the pen is that it runs out of ink fairly fast because it puts down so much ink, but I love writing with it. And so it's not a problem. I would just never take it on a trip with me.
The next one is this vintage Caveco Dia, which I have inked with another Birmingham Pen Company ink, and that's Whiskey Rebellion Bourbon. And this is actually the one that made me curious about other shades of brown and how they compare, because I love using this so much love the pen love all the vintage pens i must say yeah. and oh, i forgot to check the name i'm sorry i think it's a broad oblique yeah. and this is birmingham pen company Whiskey Rebellion Bourbon. I hope you can see anything because this cat is totally in my face and thus also in yours. Next is a vintage German Geha pen. I cannot get this fixed. It's a, it's a piston filler and I decided I still want to use it because it has a very nice nib and it's a great writer. I think this is also, oh, it's not empty. Oh, it's leaking. Found a tissue and I wonder sometimes if the pens uh, leak when they have been in the sun with the pressure, I mean, the, 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 the warmth of the sun making the interior expand and probably also the liquid expand, but it doesn't happen with every pen. So, Ike, hello, baby. I'm sorry you cannot be here. You cannot be here, but you can lay down. Okay, there you go. That's a good boy. <laughs> it has a name engraved, and since I have two similar pens, I call this one when I... Um, I put it in the book. I give it the name of the person that used to own it. Don't know if you can see it. And it has a very nice and soft and bouncy nib. Definitely a broad one. And the ink is almost empty and it is about the duty. I will show this to um Joel, my um pen fixer when I see him next, but he's in southern New Mexico, so I, it's going to be a while before I see him. Yeah, and I'll ask him if he thinks he may be able to fix it. I couldn't. I tried it. I took the pen apart, but no success. Next is this Faber Castell Ondo. And... While I love using the pen, with this ink, it has given me trouble with hard starts. I wonder if it's empty now also. It's a pissed, um, the cartridge, oh yeah, <laughs> there you go, okay. Gonna, yeah, definitely empty. Yes. So, there you go. This also has a broad nib. And 
I like to use it, but with this ink that I had in here, that was not a good match because I don't remember this pen giving me so much trouble with hard starts. And this shade of brown was Robert Oster Café Café Crema. Nice pen, B nib, empty now. Here's another Father Castell, a Castell 10, which has been since many, many years a preferred pen for letters. And that's why it looks the way it does. I have dragged it from home to work and from work to home, not being very careful with it. So. I believe that this is also a broad oblique nib and the ink is oh Casey I love this so much thank you Mont Blanc James Purdy and Sons I'm just gonna call it single malt cartridge converter which is screwed into the pen but of course you can take it out to clean it thoroughly okay what's next everybody's favorite this beauty Omas Paragon Bronze Arco, whatever. I, I never know how to say this name, right? So I'm going to shorten it. I'm just going to say Paragon Bronze. And I believe it's a B nib. This pen. This pen had been giving me so much trouble and it's all homemade because I used to be so ignorant. I would just use the pens and write with them, but then not for maybe possibly weeks. So there must have been a ton of ink residue in there, just dried up. And it took me days and days of cleaning with special cleaning fountain pen cleaner. And now it's back to being a wonderful writer. And this is Colorverse Red Rock. And you can probably see how wet the ink comes down onto the paper. My currently inked journal, by the way, is a Tomoe River notebook oh. okay next is this pelican the golden burial m200 I'm just going to say go JB. It has a broad nib. I believe it's a steel nib. Correct me if I'm wrong. And this ink is. Ah, yes. Another. Another 
ink sample from my friend Casey. Thank you, Casey. Birmingham Pen Company Fox Squirrel. So I really like this pen very much, even though I can tell you had to create some stairs for the cat. I can tell you it's not as smooth as my other pelicans with uh, gold nibs. And those we're gonna get to now. This one is my favorite writer and I love it, even though it has a stain that may have been caused by some acidic glue or something. It's a Pelican 400. I hope I didn't say M400 because it's a 400 and it has Vintage and it has this beautiful broad of week nib. I love this pen. I love writing with it. It's a wonderful writer. I usually call it stained, so I know which one because there will be more Pelican 400s. This has a broad beak nib, and did I just look up which ink it is? Yes, I did, but I can't remember. Well, <laughs> let's not say it. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the Birmingham Pen Company Petrified Wood, which was one of the inks that I got for Christmas. I'm gonna see how that goes. I'm gonna turn on the light and hopefully we will get some improvement here. There we go. By the way, if you see the shimmer in the fox squirrel now no this is not a shimmer ink it must have been residue that was still in the pen and i do not care one sim one single bit i love that fox squirrel is now a glitter ink next is another pitycon 400 this one was a company pen so i hopefully you can see that kugelfischer so a German company must have given this out to their maybe favorites or maybe all of their people who worked for them. So I love these engravings because they tell a story that is, yeah, that belongs to the writing instrument. It's just that sadly we don't know that story, but we can imagine that maybe that was this worker who did some awesome work and who got as a reward this beautiful pen. Oh, don't put that into parentheses normally, but whatever. If I'm when I'm talking, I have trouble. I this is, is it an M or an F nib? Hmm. I think it's a medium. Pretty sure it's a medium. I should know, right? I should know my pens. So this one is, oh, yes, sorry. This one is, you can never get this ink because... I accidentally mixed two inks. <laughs> so let's just call it a dog mix. So it, I didn't do it on purpose, at least not this time. It was a 
a Diatromantis Bach uh, sample, I think from Goulet, a birthday ink. And the other one was a sample from Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. Sadly, the, no, wait a minute. I could have been from Casey also. Maybe Brenda or Casey. Ay, 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 ay. Didn't write it down here. I know I've written it down somewhere. Here I wrote down a sample from Brenda. So thank you, Brenda. I hope my bookkeeping is not wrong. So, yep, that is this. Let me show you my new ink. Incopedia system. I used to be all fancy and put a color sample in here. I don't do this anymore. I use a German school notebook that I decorated with all kinds of funny stuff. And so, oh, so I wrote down in the back that this is an Oxford notebook with 90 gram paper. And I switched the old interior in favor of this new system. And I just watched Ginger Peachy Stationery's video where she talks about her systems and how she agonizes about making it work for her needs. And I really, I find that this new system works for me really nicely. So I do, I have sorted inks by brand and I so these are all my bottled inks only in the back do I have the samples and where they came from and as you can see here this is what I do as I put the ink into a pen I add a scribble of the, yeah, with that pen right by the name of the ink. And if I ever want to send my family to buy some inks for me, I can say, hey, guys, here, take this. This tells you everything I own. And I only started this recently. And so here's where I write down what I want to send to pen friends, what they have mentioned, what they would like to try. And here is the um, list of samples and the name of the person that I got it from. Yeah, pen friends. Yeah, and here... For example, birthday samples from Goulet pens. Yeah. Yeah. That is my new system. Okay, let's carry on, carry on. What is in this next beautiful Pelican 400? I hope it's not empty. It sure looks empty. Hmm, let's see. I'm going to try it up here. And sure enough, it is empty. This used to have Birmingham pen. No, I'm lying. It's the next one that has Birmingham pen company. This had Pilot Iroshizuku Inaho. And it's also another... Pelican 400 with a lovely broad oblique nib. I hope you can see that with the my lamp here casting shades. And now comes my beautiful new treasure. Mm, my darling, my precious. 
I love it so much. I love all my Pelicans. As you know, I've raved about them all the time. And recently, my friend Joel of the Pen Club, whom I've mentioned many times, he offered a discount on all Pelican pens purchased through him. He's called the Pelican Man also. And Joel, so I asked him about M600s. He gave me the price. And then he said, well, I also have others that are used. And I was immediately drawn to this one, which is the Pelican M620 Grand Place. Grand Place is a reference to Brussels. And the crazy thing is that just last summer, my daughter and my husband had been there. I didn't. They were traveling by themselves, but just so, so cool. And then I asked, so what nib does it have? And he's like, B, it's a B nib. And I'm like, sold. Yep. So this beauty has a two-tone gold nib, and I have inked it with Birmingham Pen Company Copperhead. I have generously received two, no, generously received two generous samples from Brenda as well as Casey. So thank you both for these um, because as you know, I love my Birmingham Pen Company inks. Isn't it glorious? This is actually the most expensive pen that I've ever purchased for myself. I thought, that's okay. No pens for Christmas, so <laughs> let's do it in January. Broad nib. I can literally agonize over inks to put into a new pen. Do you do that? Do you ever go crazy over that decision? In this case, I truly did. I think in the future, I probably won't. I will most likely use up Copperhead, the samples that I have, and then move on to something different. This is, by the way, a piston filler, in case you wonder. And, um, but I may actually even put in a blue ink or a green ink. It won't matter that much anymore. But initially it did to the extent of me putting in something, then dumping it back out <laughs> to re-ink in the pen. And I'm, I'm loving the Copperhead now because it picks up exactly the shade of um, a coppery um, color in that grip section here. Yeah, what do you think? How do you, how do you like my new baby? I love it. Pelican M620 Grand Place Brown Swirl with a beam nib. So this is so boring <laughs> compared, but it's still a pen that I really like. It's a Pelican Pura. Very reliable writer. As you could see, I haven't touched this in probably two weeks. No hard starts. It has a broad nib and this ink has a lot of sheen and it is oh no it's actually not sheen i thought it was sheen but it's actually shimmer thank you ramona it's diamond winter spice so i knew that this 
could handle the shimmer very well and it does indeed as you can see here comes next this pen which it's an Ashford and it's probably, I think it's Ashford by Visconti and it has a gold nib, but it is a very, what can I say, a very, um, I want to say bitchy, <laughs> no it's not, it's a very moody writer. I've had a lot of hard starts, I've had trouble with the ink drying up i have trouble with some inks in this pen so and i actually got it to write before i started filming because i thought this is gonna be no fun if it doesn't write for me when i start filming so that's what i did and it this is the true Winter Okre Fortaleza. It's a medium nib, 14 karat nib, and it's a, see, it's skipping on me. I just, I don't know. We'll have to try different inks because I really think it's a gorgeous pen. But I have yet to find an ink that gets along with this pen. And with me, the writer. <laughs> I think this sample was from... Brenda, I'm pretty sure. Thank you, Brenda. And the last one is this pen that was a gift from a friend in Germany. It's an online pen. I call it the online bamboo pen. And it is inked with exactly that ink on online brown. Not an online bamboo, online brown, that's what it's called. It came in a set. And it has, and that's what I thought was really cool. It has the um, grip section can be replaced. And this one is a broad oblique. Yet again, you know me, I love them. So that's the one I chose. It feels a little bit more stubbish than a broad oblique nib, I gotta say. Online bamboo. I actually really like this ink. It shades beautifully and it's a nice rich brown. So yeah, really like this. And this is wood or bamboo, bamboo, of course, I should say, yeah, very nice and soft and warm to the touch and these were my brown babies you can see that some of these have a hard time drying and i believe this is what happens when they have been sitting in the pen for Let's just put it out for too long. So <laughs> this is one of them. Now it's dry now, maybe almost. 
You see the same thing here with the, but there's, it shows the sheen of the, that's the Waterman Karen Deluxe. Yeah. What do you think? Do you have a favorite brown? I think if I had to pick one, it would still be the Birmingham Pen Company Whiskey Rebellion. And I think partially also because the it was the first brown that made me fall in love with brown so very much. Yeah. And that's my study in brown as of now. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know which brown is your favorite. I would like to know. Bye.